Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's lovely to see you here this morning. Uh, it's wonderful to meet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as brothers and sisters in Christ today. Just a couple of notices as we begin. Uh, the first is to say there are some courgettes on the uh, window ledge over there. Uh, they've not grown there. Uh, yeah, you look at them and you go, are they really courgettes? Yeah, they are. They've been well watered and uh, slightly overgrown. So, you know, please take first come, first served. And Samantha's got more as well if you um, wanted some more. Juice. So, you know, plenty on, on offer. Uh, it'll be plenty to feed us if you please do take those. Secondly, we'd say we've got exciting things happening today. Mars is preaching on Jonah chapter 2. Samantha's sharing some exciting news that I'll let her tell you later on. And so we'll come to that later on. I'd like you to listen to these words from Isaiah 46 as we begin our service to remind us of who we come before this morning. We come to the living God, and God says these words. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. We come to the only true living God through Jesus Christ this morning to offer him honour and praise and worship. We're going to stand together and sing the song, uh, Though the nations rage, kingdoms rise and fall, there is still one king reigning over us all. And the chorus reminds us there is none above him, none before him. All of time is in his hands. And we trust in his name, for our God is the Ancient of Days. Let's stand and praise his name. <laughs> Please do take a seat. 
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for those truths that we've just sung about, those truths that we've just read about in your word. Thank you that you are the only God. You are the one who sustains us. You're the one who has made us and will carry us. Father, thank you that you are the God who rescues us. So, Lord, we do come this morning and we trust in your name. You are the God who is from everlasting to everlasting. And we give you all of the glory and honour and praise that is due to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Samantha. Morning, everyone. So, as John said, exciting news. I haven't won the lottery, but it is better than that. Much better. Next March um, 2024, there is a couple of guys from Rushton, Matt, Matt Croxton and Simon King, and they have been arranging an event on behalf of Rushton and Higham um, Council of Churches, and it's for young people. Um, there is a band called LZ7, Illuminate, <clears throat> and they're an organisation that go around schools and deliver music, electronic dance, and um, concerts, but during these concerts they share the good news of Jesus. Um, they've worked for many years as part of a Christian charity called Mes Message Trust, and now they work um, <clears throat> with a, another um, organisation called Light. So they've been working mainly in Manchester, but now they're sort of going all across the UK. And <clears throat> these two guys, Matt Croxton and Simon King, have contacted them and they're coming in March. They're gonna go to five secondary schools and Charlbrook is included. Mm -hmm. The other four schools will be in Rushton, uh, Rushton and sort of the surrounding areas. So it's very, very exciting. And what they do is they come to the school, deliver the concert, and then <clears throat> there's some follow-up afterwards, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the lead will normally share his testimony during the concert, so I thought I'd give you a little excerpt of what he says when he's doing that. Why on earth did everybody pray? Why did everybody call out for something? If they know it's coming to an end, if they know it's going to be the after show, they know that something's going to finish. Why did every single person on the plane pray? Everybody prayed because they wanted hope. Everybody prayed because they wanted to know there was something else. Everybody prayed because when it comes to an end, they want to know that we have something more to live for. If you're in here today and maybe you're going through a tough time and you feel like you're stuck in a plane that's dying down to earth, when you reach out to God, just like Ruth reached out to me, when you reach out to God, there's not a chance he leaves you where you are. There's not a chance he leaves, a, he leaves you on your own. There's not a chance. In fact, he parachutes in next to you for the roller coaster ride, so you're sat with him. He puts your arm around you, so you go through the troubles with him rather than without him. Everybody prayed because they had a god shaped hole in here, and they knew that they needed more. When we got down, I had these amazing conversations in a bar about, you know, what, what's destiny, what's hope, what's future. But here's the thing. The oxygen mask drops. And when it drops, to get the oxygen to work, you have to reach out and pull the mask. For the oxygen to flow, you have to grab the mask. If you don't, it doesn't work. So I dare you today. Is it your turn to reach out and grab the mask? Is it your turn to breathe deep? Is it your turn to understand there's a God that loves you for being you? Put a mask on, breathe deep, live life to the max, the best life you've ever lived because Jesus is with you for the journey. If that's you right here, right now, I'm going to give you one opportunity before we leave because we would only do half our job if we didn't tell young people about Jesus. If you want to put Jesus in the driving seat for the first time, or maybe you want to give your life back to God because you know you've been miles off, you've been living a turbulent life on the plane, and you want to grab the oxygen mask and put it fully on your mouth and breathe deep of God's love because of what he did. Just a little bit there of <clears throat> and how he talks to the young people. So it's really exciting. It's an opportunity for them to hear the gospel, but the exciting bit also happens afterwards. And there's been a steering group um, re uh, led by Matt and Simon and the other four um, churches that are near to the other four secondary schools who are gonna offer some follow-up afterwards. So a six week series, but also it might be up to the churches that are near to those schools to offer um, support themselves as well. So excitingly, we are gonna be involved in that. I'm going to be going to the concerts and helping out there 
Um, but for us as a church, it would be really great if we could be praying about this initiative in March, praying that it would also open doors for us. As you know, we've been trying to set up a CU for several months now, but we're kind of hitting lots of barriers. So it'd be great if this was a bit of an open door as well to meeting some Christians in the school, Christian teachers in the school, and perhaps getting something consistent like a CU running again. Um, we are thinking about supporting financially as well. So if you're interested in that, then speak to John or myself or Brian afterwards or Miles. Um, but for now, let's just be praying that this would be um, a really great thing that would give God glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gospel. We thank you um, for this group, LZ7 in particular, who have such a passion to share your good news with young people. And we thank you for the hearts that they've reached so far, those people that have heard and have accepted you as Lord and Saviour. And we pray, Lord, that you would do great things um, in March in this area. We pray for the churches supporting that um, we would all be prayerful that young people, especially in Shambuk Academy, would come to know you as the one true God at this event. And we ask it for your namesake and for your glory. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Samantha. We really do want to be getting behind this as a church and praying. We've got an opportunity this Wednesday at our monthly prayer meeting to pray together. Uh, we're going to be meeting here in this room Wednesday at half past seven. And it's really good. We, we often pray here in this place for the, the thousands of children who come in and through here week in, week out. They'll be glad it's summer holidays now, but week in, week out, they're here. And we want to be praying for them and for the Christians here that we might establish a Christian union here and that the gospel of Jesus would be shared by the young people to the young people here in this place. So if you're able to, this Wednesday, half past seven till half past eight, our church prayer meeting, please come to this room and we can join together in prayer. We have good news to share with people. We have a gospel to proclaim. And we're going to sing now of the, the Saviour who died for us. We're going to stand and sing together, I will glory in my Redeemer. Let's stand as we sing. in our prayers this morning. Thank you, Richard. Hello. 
let's pray. We praise you, Father God, that you are king over all, and that while nations and powers may come and go, your kingdom will never end. In you is all power and glory, and we thank you that we need not fear, because you are with us. You know our names and surround us with your love. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, whose precious blood paid the price of our sin. It was our sin that drove the bitter nails, but in his faithfulness the Lord redeemed us from sin and death. And we confess that we continue to sin in thought, word and deed, in negligence, weakness and uh, through our own deliberate fault. We do not love and serve you and others as we should. We neglect your word and do not seek you. We rely on our own strength and allow the worries of this life to crowd in, our, in on our hope. But we thank you that you are merciful, faithful and righteous, forgiving us our sins if we confess them and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Father, we ask that you would cleanse us from all sin and renew a right spirit within us. We, Father, we pray that in this holiday season we would find peace and rest. We ask that this would be a time of refreshment where we, your children, draw closer to you. We pray and thank you for all the holiday clubs, summer camps, conventions and missions happening in your name this summer and ask that you would reap a harvest for your kingdom as the gospel of Jesus is preached and inspire and equip Christians to love and live for Christ. For our church, Father, we pray that you would draw us closer together in love for you and one another. May our lives act as beacons pointing the way to Jesus. Inspire us as we meet together and help us to speak boldly of the Lord as we serve those around us. We pray for those um, in need. We pray for those waiting for surgery. We pray for patience and your great timing. We thank you for what you have made possible in medicine and surgery and ask that you would bring the teams of experts together to deliver these much needed operations. Father, we pray for those who are sick or in need of care. We pray for relief and thank you for the love and support being shown by family and brothers and sisters in Christ. And we take this opportunity now to pray for the health service in this country and all that work in it and for it. We ask for a resolution to the strike action. We do not claim to know what is right or just, but pray that there would be a willingness to seek peace and to focus again on the work of so serving those who are sick and suffering. Father, we also pray for our country, for our king and our government. We ask that decisions would be taken in the best interests of the people of this land, but above all that the church would be, remain free to share the gospel of Christ and that we might live peaceful lives. We pray for all Christians in lands where the state is hostile to the church, to the gospel, and where there is active persecution. Because we know that your kingdom is eternal and that your power is greater, we ask that you would equip your children in those lands to serve you faithfully, overcoming fear and growing in hope and love. We ask for your miraculous intervention to preserve and grow your <coughs> kingdom in those lands. Father, we ask personally for boldness and courage to take the gospel to the hardest places, to speak up for the Lord and to share the reason for our hope to the most cynical hearts, trusting that your word is powerful to save lives. Grant us the words to say in love to those who are lost. Finally, Father God, we, we cannot see what's ahead of us, what will happen in our lives, but we are certain that the Lord Jesus Christ will return to take us to be with him. May we be found waiting. As we fix our eyes on the Lord, may you grant us strength to endure through the trials of this life and pour out your spirit and grow in us the fruit of faith, hope and love. And may all of this be to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Richard, for leading us in our prayers this morning. Well, throughout the year, Miles has been working through the book of Jonah for us, and he's coming to Jonah chapter 2 today, and Alison's going to come now and bring us our reading from Jonah 2. Thank you. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the ship's belly, ship, fish's belly, sorry, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billow, billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Reeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountain. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought me up, my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have owed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. so much Alison. Well please keep your Bibles open at that. We're going to turn back to it in just a moment. Uh, before we do so, the boys and girls are going to leave us with Rosie and we're going to stand and sing together uh, His Mercy is More. It's a song that reminds us our sins are many. Uh, we're reminded of our own sinfulness but God's mercy is more. Let's stand and sing together. They're eager to go so let's stand and sing. Is God was a payment, his life was a 
Sikt. Well, as John mentioned, please have your Bibles open. What was it? Was it the Bereans that were complimented because they tested everything against Scripture? And I used to test the pastors in Malawi saying, um, if I say something and you think this Bible saying something else, which one do you believe? And that should be the same for you. But hopefully I won't go too early. Um, if, by the way, can I just add my uh, encouragement for prayer and maybe for some more practical support for... Uh, not S Club 7, but LZ 7, uh, as they come. Uh, in my day job with Scripture Union, we work quite a lot with them because we try to encourage the churches we work with to, to be the follow-up um, to the wonderful work that's done. They won't always be your, your um, cup of tea. Uh, for example, as I go around events these days, I carry my earplugs with me. Um, <laughs> uh, but they are wonderful at engaging because certainly in my uh, development as a disciple. I remember when I was a teenager, it was seeing folk from my culture, and I don't mind just Scotland, but my age culture, who really took the Bible seriously and really wanted to see us have a, a personal relationship with Jesus that made a big difference in my life, and that's exactly who these nutters on the stage are. Uh, they're tied in with that, so please do pray for that. Um, and thank you for the prayers for all the holidays and events that are going around over this summer. Um, you won't see me much this summer because I'm visiting a lot of Scripture Union's events. We're really thankful. We've got, we're, we're heading towards about 13,000 volunteers uh, this summer, back towards 2019 levels, and more than that, children and young people at our events. So there's a lot of risks and challenges as well as opportunities. So do pray for us as well. You'll see it in the prayer notes, the things that I'm visiting. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come to your word, that we can sink deep into your word. And we pray that as we do so, we will know your hand reaching out to touch our hearts and our minds and our souls. Help us to have open ears, <coughs> open hearts, open minds, and be ready to go and do. Amen. 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 So we're deep into this uh, wonderful story now. Uh, this is the third sermon in a series, and we're in uh, Jonah 2. And um, we've seen that uh, down through the centuries... Um... <laughs> I've done it again, Ruth. <laughs> I've left my sermon at home. Ah, well, I, 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 so my notes in here are the prodigal father. So we're going to have a rather different sermon today. We're going to have Jonah uh, as I've just uh, reviewed it. And hopefully I'll do better than chat GPT. Um, I was saying to, to, um, I was saying to uh, John um, that uh, before I came out, I did a quick search of chat GPT on Jonah 2. Have you heard of chat GPT? Yeah. Artificial intelligence? It did amazingly well. So let's hope that I can do a little bit we as, as well um, as I look to this. I came to this uh, sermon, I came to, this, uh, came to you this morning really delighted at being able to talk about this passage. We'd already seen in our first two sermons, uh, the first sermon, the first time we were looking at it, we were looking just at the start, and we saw that Jonah was that sort of uh, successful prophet who um, had had quite a, if we look into the, into the later, uh, earlier in the book, uh, into the book of Kings and the like, we saw that he was a prophet who had been remarkably successful in many, many ways, but obviously not in the core of his heart. He saw, he heard God, and he went in exactly the opposite direction. And we wondered how often that was the case in our lives, that we were the kind of people who had a clear message from God, but intentionally went uh, in the other direction. And then we saw, uh, the last time we spoke, we saw God's mysterious and wonderful work in two sets of hearts. One was Jonah's. And the other was these um, non-believing sailors. And you remember um, that God worked in a similar way through both of them. He brought them to a situation where they recognized that God was in control. And they laid themselves at God's feet. 
And I'd like to make, emphasize that point as, as we come into chapter 2, because it's my, my thoughts reading this, that it's not cha Jonah chapter 2 that we see Jonah's repentance. In fact, Jonah's already repented on the boat. Chapter 2 is Jonah's joy and Jonah's praise because of what God's done for him, not his repentance. Because I would say if we look at the end of chapter 1, that um, when they took him and threw him overboard, Jonah had already laid himself at God's feet. He had recognized that he had gone wrong. He had thrown himself onto the Lord, knowing that he deserved death. And you know, my friends, in the modern world where we always like to tell just the good news of the gospel, there's bad news in the gospel that we will not be saved until we've got to that stage where we recognize our position and our situation before the great and the good God, that we deserve nothing but death. And we need to respond to that. As that chappy in LZ7 with the nicely dyed blonde hair and the trendy language was saying, we are heading down in that airplane. I guess that was his extended metaphor. We're about to hit the ground. The air's popped down. We need to recognize our need and we need to pull on the air. Anyone here this morning who recognizes that in themselves, perhaps for the first time, or perhaps we've been straying and relying on the wrong kind of things. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. The first thing uh, we want to look at here is the great deep. The great deep. You see, if you look, and I did, if you look online for photographs of Jonah and the whale, usually, and we'll come to that in a second, Jonah and the whale, you tend to see a photograph of Jonah, or a photograph, <laughs> there weren't any photographs around at the time guys, um, a picture, usually a cartoon picture for the children, and we tend to keep them in our minds, of a boat with Jonah being thrown overboard, and just as he's about to touch the water, what happens? A big fish or a whale comes out, and it's sort of sitting there waiting for him. Is that what we read here? No. And if we are going through our Christian lives thinking like that cartoon picture, we may get really disappointed <coughs> and worried. Because again, what God is showing here in this history, not just a story, is that sometimes in his providence and his goodwill, goodwill, he allows us to fall deep, deep, deep into the darkest spaces until in our distress we call to the Lord and amazingly we find that he answers him. Once upon a time when uh, I was earning a little bit more money uh, we had the fun of going as a family um, of six of us to the Red Sea um, to go scuba diving. We decided to feed the children. We're getting to that age where we weren't quite so children anymore. And we felt we had to do something a little bit different than just being somewhere with mum and dad to attract them to come on holiday with us. So we went scuba diving and we went from scratch so we were learning. And uh, I, myself and the two boys, um, the two elder ones, we went out on our final dive and you're down at 30 meters, I think it is. Um, that you're qualified to get down to and we were swimming out over the, the coral reefs and everything and then suddenly we went over a sea cliff and all we saw was this dark dark blue and the water got colder and everything and I must admit I began to get really worried 
because if you know anything about it, they've been telling us how carefully you have to manage your, your weights that are around you and your breathing so you don't go up or you don't go down. And if you panic and all the air goes out of your lungs, you get heavier and you go down, down, down. And I was panicking. And that's the picture that comes to me here. The deep, deep, dark cold of the depths that God took Jonah down into is amazing. Just look at the beautiful poetry that uh, in, in, in Jonah's psalm, in his prayer, that we see. He hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas. The current swirled around me. All the waves and breakers swept over me. I went deep 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 he says to the root of the mountains i sank down the earth beneath barred me in forever but you brought me up from the pit do any of you here this morning feel a little bit like that perhaps not perhaps you can think back to a time in your life when you did feel like that i can certainly remember one time it was when I bailed out of business life because business life had turned to a, a, a disaster for me. In retrospect, I can see God's plan. It felt like I was going down, down into a pit. I got so drained that I started getting cellulitis. I don't know if any of you know what that is. I kept getting bacterial infections in my skin and I've never felt so much anger, so much pain. I felt I was down, down, down into the deepest pit. If you're here this morning feeling that you are in that depth of the sea, the wonderful message from God is you can never be so deep that he isn't with you and he's looking after you. Easy said, Miles but very difficult perhaps to cling to when we're there in the pit. If you're feeling that way this morning, that's God's message for you. I'm there. I'm there. So we've seen the great deep. This might end up in a shorter sermon than usual, by the way. So yeah, that's a positive, isn't it? We're in the great deep. But we're also going to look at the great fish. The great fish. What, does, uh, what did we meet at the end of chapter 1? But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Now usually when we see that children's picture, it's not a fish. It's often a whale, isn't it? Um, and uh, and certainly the song that I remember from being a child and we and we now sing with children and young people that I'm on events is what is it is come listen to the tale and you have to do the action of Jonah and the whale, whale way down in bottom of the ocean, bottom of the ocean. well done and actually it's, it's, it's actually a great song because it teaches this story so well and then smart Alex like me will say, oh, they've got it wrong, is it isn't a whale. There's a lot of debate about this. And, and, you know, this is almost an example of one of these things that we're told in Scripture, not to get involved with debates. I had it written down in my notes. I can't remember the verse, of course, at the moment. Some of you who've got better memories for Scripture can shout it out. But where uh, in Paul's letter, we're told not to go into discussions about genealogies come on john show why you're the pastor no i'm sorry i shouldn't have put you on the spot there um, but you could you know that you know the passage i'm telling you about. and so often we do uh, and some of us who characters like me would probably love to spend forever debating whether it was a whale or a fish or a shark in fact it's the king james version that is to blame for this a little bit because in the passage where where Jesus talks about Jonah and the whale. By the way, an excellent example of where Jesus and the New Testament absolutely underlines that these Old Testament stories are history and not story. Mm -hmm. Useful for you to remember if you're ever having a discussion 
with somebody who's interested in the faith but still worried, especially if you're at university and school. Jesus so often underpinned that these stories of the Old Testament are history. They cannot be uh, gotten away from. But the King James Version says, <coughs> it's translated, they translated, they did a marvelous job, by the way, but it translates that word that in the Greek as whale. Even exactly the same word in the Greek version of the Hebrew Bible, which is translated into English, fish, great fish. And that's because the underlying Greek and the underlying Hebrew basically don't do a categorization like our modern scientific world. Basically, they're saying a big thing in the sea. And sometimes that's translated in some versions, a sea monster. Sometimes it's translated a big fish. And in one place in the King James, it's translated a whale. Guess what? It don't matter. Because what's the point here? What's the point here? The point is this. It's certainly not in Obadiah. The point is, but the Lord provided a great fish. And that word provided has even more depth than in that English word. It's direct, the, the meaning of that word is absolutely directly related to where elsewhere does that phrase in the fullness of time in the fullness of time in god's perfect timing he provided a great fish not on the surface but deep 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 down in the water when the fish then saved jonah isn't that wonderful? You see, another message here, my friends, is even as we are in the deep and in the deepest darkness and in the deepest of despair, when we're so deep we think we're at the roots of the mountains, God is there and in his time he will save us from that situation if we are his disciples or if we're not if we have genuinely got to that stage where we have thrown our lives on him the great deep the great fish and then finally the third great the great prayer in chapter two we're in one of those wonderful prayers those wonderful psalms that jump out at the most surprising places in scripture if you want to look at some great hymns great psalms great songs great prayers it's not just in psalms they pop out all over the place don't they if you're following scripture unions bible reading guys which i hope you are although other versions are available <laughs> we're in the middle of isaiah and I can't even remember what chapter we're in, but there's the most amazing prayer from Isaiah that we've just been through that I had forgotten all about. So bad me, even though I read through the Bible almost every year and it just jumped out. And this is one of those wonderful Psalms that jump out of Jonah in his prayer right now as in his distress, I called to the Lord. You see, it's past tense. <coughs> this isn't God, this isn't Jonah calling out as he flippers around. This is him in the fish, looking back at what God has done for him as he went deep, 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 deep. And at its core is the message that we find uh, in uh, 6, at the end of verse 6. Uh, no, sorry, in verse 7. Verse 6. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you. My prayer rose up. Um, there's, a, there's a fancy uh, term for a kind of psalm, it's called, a, or a kind of a structure in the Word of God. It's called chiasm. Any of you heard of it? Chiasm, if you've done some 
um, has a lot of noise. It cut, it's, it's like a cross or like a V. And it's used a lot in Hebrew uh, teaching in particular, um, where there's a symmetry about a passage. The, the verse, the, uh, the thought that's at the start of the passage and the thought at the end tie up. Then the next thought and the penultimate thought tie up. You see what I mean? And then the next ones tie up. And when you see this picture, it's been written with a real, real purpose because the core focus is where the ideas come together in the crux of the passage. And everything here is guiding our eyes towards the center of this prayer. Look, in my distress, I called out to the Lord and he answered me from the depths of the grave i called for help so the god is in action in, in my distress i called to the lord and he answered me and before that from inside uh, just leave there at the end what do we have and the lord commanded the fish and it vomited jonah up onto the dry land so we have the lord's action at the start uh, and we have the uh, lord's action at the end mapping together next bit down we have um um, where have we? You hurled me into the deep. And then, at the, and then we have what? We have it be going up into the dry land. Uh, verse 9. The salvation comes from the Lord. Uh, verse B, and then uh, verse 3. I went down into the heart of the sea. There's a chiasm. There, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cross here. Um, verse 8. Uh, those who cling to worthless idols. So he's begun to recognize that they are worthless idols in verse 8. Um, in verse 4, he has the privilege of thinking, that, uh, of suddenly coming to this realization that he will see the homely temple again. So you see in, in, in 4, we have the look to the, the, the holy temple in, verse, um, in, in, the, in the verse close to the end. We have the idols. Do you see the sort of... You'll have to go into it in more detail. If I had my notes, I'd have been able to go into it in more detail. But you, you see the picture. Go back and look again, and you will see this V shape coming right the way down until we get, when my life was ending away, I remembered you, Lord. My praise, my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Salvation comes from the so we got this wonderful prayer that goes through uh, the whole story and it's a the other thing that's so wonderful it's very similar to a lot of hebrew poetry it's like a heartbeat there is a constant beat i think it's five times again if i had my notes i'd be able to check that but i'm pretty sure it was five times five times you see a heartbeat in this in this prayer uh, jonah is saying i recognize the trouble i am in the rec i recognize the unworthiness that i have but you act. And again, I'll struggle. But when life was, here's an example, verse 7. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you. And there's five heartbeats like that. Oh, I recognize my condition. But then you acted and you saved me. But you brought my life up from the pit. To the roots of the mountain I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit. O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away. I remembered you O Lord. My praise rose up. Salvation comes from the Lord. So this poem. This, this psalm. By the way, if you've got a study Bible, it's studded with cross-references to the Psalms. It's just so absolutely wonderful. When Jonah was in that deepest pit, when Jonah, can you just imagine, was sitting inside this big fish, big monster, big whale. Can you imagine what it was like? I can't even imagine. I don't think it was anything like the Disney movie of um, uh, Pinocchio. Do you remember the Disney movie of Pinocchio and the, the father type? Isn't it? Is it the father type that's in the fish? It's a long time since I've watched it. Um, I don't think it was nice as nice as that. But as he's deep down there, here's something else for us to remember. His heart was able to pull in scripture 
to engage with his heart that he was able to pray so wonderfully. You see, his prayers were woven with David's psalms. How deep is scripture in our hearts, my friend? When we are deep, deep, deep down and we are seeking to engage with God in prayer, we know scripture so well that it just sings out in our hearts and into our words and into our prayers. Scripture is to be prayed through and prayer is to be interwoven with scripture. It's one of the delights that we have that we have the word of God in our hands, in our own language. And we need to come there daily. What have we got to bring out from this for today's day and age? I don't think any of us will end up inside a big well. Perhaps if you fall out of your boat, um, you might be picked up by a big well. I don't know. I think it's not very, um, it's not very likely. But all of us face this deep, deep pit at some stage in our lives, don't we? Here's some thoughts. Very practical ones, perhaps. First of all, we need to avoid, if we are disciples, the sort of yo-yo situation that perhaps we see here with Jonah. When Jonah was on dry land, he went adrift. And we don't see the depth of prayer life that we see here. But when he was deep in the pit, Thankfully, his reaction was to turn from, to God. But there's a real risk that we can be similar in our discipleship, that we're yo-yo Christians. When things are going well, the risk is that we forget about God. When we're, if we're not disciples yet, if we're not Christians yet, the risk is that if life is going well, we got a good job, a good car, and everything looks hunky-dory, then we don't think about eternal matters. And it's only when this breaks in, it's only when the depths break in that we turn to God. And then God responds in love, but if we're not so careful, as soon as we're back on an even keel and spat up on the dry land, as it says in scripture here, I love that phrase, vomit up on the dry land, Ugh, picture that. Uh, we, but we get back to normal and we ba get back to our own selves. Are you like that? God wants you to cling to him constantly in the way that Jonah clung to him in the belly of the whale. How do we do that? Well, in the good old scripture union way. Read your Bible, pray every day and you will grow, grow, grow. There is a, there is a benefit to the old evangelical habit of coming daily to God in scripture praying through it praying expectantly opening your heart to the Holy Spirit who can then transform those dry words into the most succulent succulent of sweet things and every day seek to follow the Lord Jesus Another thing that we should be learning here as well is that in those depths, we can cling to the Lord. Difficult as it is, we have these promises that we can cling to the Lord as disciples. And I know there must be some here today who are feeling that they're in the depths of the pit and the despair and down at the root of the mountain. And I have no right in many ways to say the things that I'm saying, except they are in here in Scripture. God is promising that he is with you and that in his time, in the fullness of time, there will be salvation. And finally, perhaps, the greatest wonder here is the wonder of the picture that this has of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
might come as a surprise, but how long was Jonah down there in the depths? Three days. What happened to the greatest of all prophets of God? The very son of God? He went down into the depths of the pit for us. And on the third day, through God's action, he raised from the dead. He came out of the tomb onto dry land again that we might be able to go through life's dark pits to go through dark, the depths of the oceans in life and come out the other side life as a whole here on earth wonderful as it is is not the way God designed it for us and through the life of Jesus, we have the promise that we will come through <laughs> this very life like Jonah went through the depths. And we will come onto a beach that is the promised new world with no tears, where weapons will be destroyed and made into plowshares, when the lion and the lamb will be able to lie down together. And we will be in perfect rest. What a promise, my friends, that there is in this simple chapter of Jonah. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the history that you have brought down through the eons that we are able to see deep into your heart and your mind and your character through the history of folk like Jonah. We thank you for your promises that are buried in this most terrible of tales of somebody who was following you, decided to go in the wrong direction, but was taken by you to the depths of despair in the storm who threw his life on you and even as he went deep 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 into the darkness he came to a knowledge that you were there that you would save that you were in control lord if there's something in our lives this morning perhaps a memory of such, an exa uh, such a situation that can encourage us even today. Or perhaps we know that we're in <laughs> such a situation now. We pray, Lord, that you will give us encouragement, that you will give us a sense of your presence, of your arm around us, and a confidence and an assurance that in all and through all, you are in control. And you will bring us back to the beach. And that through everything, through what Jesus did for us on the cross and his own uh, three days uh, in the tomb, that we can look forward to that ultimate of beaches, the new heaven and the new earth, when we will walk again with you as Adam and Eve did in the garden. And we will know you again fully as friend and master. We pray that even tomorrow, Lord, as perhaps the darkness of Monday morning faces us, that we will learn the lessons to cling close to you on a regular basis, avoid the yo-yos, to open your word, to sink deep into your character through the pages, with the Holy Spirit acting in our hearts, with prayer responding to your word, surrounding us by friends who are commonly following your path, that in fellowship we might stay secure in your way. Lord, we pray these things, not in our own strength, but in the strength that comes through knowing you as our personal saviour, with the strength that comes through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that you might be glorified in our life as you are in heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much, Miles. Jonah's testimony of being thrown into the great deep and the Lord providing that great fish and salvation coming uh, as Jonah prays was also the testimony of John Newton, who wrote our final hymn that we're going to sing this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch like me. And it's because that Christ has died, because three days later he was raised to life, that we too can sing of this amazing grace that once we were lost, but now we're found. Once we were blind, but now we see. Let's stand and sing his praise. Amazing praise. <laughs> to for uh, tea and coffee that's going to be served at the side of the room. Uh, because it's school holidays, we don't need to pick away, we can leave stuff out. Thank you so much to all of the setup teams and people who have been helping week in, week out. We've got a few weeks break over the summer holidays, so we're thankful for that. Let's close with a prayer from the end of Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever.